of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello everyone, praise the Lord. How is it going? I want to thank our Lord who is blessing us yet with another a new week. And we want to bless him, we want to thank him for that support he's continuing to give us. Today I want to share with you about the power of the word of God. When St. Paul was done with his ministries, with his missionary journeys in Asia Minor, he invited all the bishops from Asia Minor, from Ephesus, from Corinth and other places. And then they met in Ephesus and uh, he was to go on his journey to Jerusalem and then end up later on in Rome and would never be able to see him again. So when he was going, he gave a special speech in the city of Meritus, which is recorded next of the apostles, chapter 20. And uh, in verse 32, what does he say? And now I commend you to God and to that gracious word of his that can build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are consecrated. And now I commend you, I entrust you to God. He's telling the bishops, the, the ones who are in charge of the churches in Asia Minor. And I also commend you to his gracious word that can build you up and give you an, an inheritance among those who are consecrated. The word of God, our life. The word of God that can build us up. The word of God that can make us move into our inheritance. I know you may not know so much about the word of God, but today we want to, to, to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to know what is the word of God. What can the word of God accomplish in my life? When you read in Mark chapter 13, verse 31, it says, The heavens, heaven may, may pass away, the earth may pass away, but the word of God will remain forever. Maybe as we talk now, the situation that is in this world at this very moment, everything seems to be passing away. Your hope is gone. Maybe where you put all your trust, now you don't see any, you see a lot of darkness. Maybe you, you feel everything is shaking. But my dear brother, my dear sister, I want to tell you that those who are rooted in the word of God can never be the same. Those who are rooted in the word of God, there is something special that is in their lives. Let us read from Isaiah 55, I think verse, verse 10 to 11. What does it say? My word is like the snow and the rain that come down from the sky to water the earth. They make the crops grow and provide seed for planting and food to eat. So that, so also with the word that I speak, it will not fail to do what I, I intend it to do. It will do everything I have sent it to do. Once again, I want to read this for you. My word is like snow and rain that come down from the sky to water the earth. When, and they make the crops grow and provide seed for planting and food to eat. So also with the word that I speak that he's speaking right now. It will not fail to do what I plan it to do. It will do everything I send it to do. What does that mean? It means that the word of God will accomplish the will of God in me and you. Are you rooted in the word of God? Are you built in the word of God? The word of God is saying, as we have read it, that it will accomplish the will of God in me and you. Let us read from Psalms 107, verse 20. What does that one say? What can the word of God do in my life? What can the word of God do in your life? God sent forth his word to heal them and snatch them from their grave. The word of God heals. The word of God can snatch you and me from whatever grave you have been buried. Maybe you are in a grave of depression. Maybe you are in a grave of sorrow. Maybe you are in a grave of addictions. Maybe you are in a grave of despair. Maybe you are in a grave of isolation. Maybe you are in a grave of sickness or disease. Maybe you are in a grave of so many setbacks and misfortunes. My dear brother, my dear sister, the word of God says, God sent forth his word 
to hear them. That is Psalm 107 verse 20. God sent forth his word to hear them and snatch them from their grave. When you read in Wisdom chapter 16 verse 12, what does it say? Let me check here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Wisdom 16 verse 12. For indeed, neither have no application healed them, O Lord, but your all healing word that hears all humanity. The word of God again can hear us. Can hear us of all that is in our heart. That bitterness. That despair. That resentment. That ill feeling. Even the sicknesses. Spiritual and physical. When reading Matthew chapter 24 verse 27. We read that. Those who listen to the words of God. And act upon them. They will be like wise men. Who built their houses on the rock. So the word of God is the foundation upon which I and you can build our lives. And it is equivalent to building on the rock. And the word of God says that when the storms came and the winds came and floods came and they shook the house. Yes, the house was shaken, but the word of God says it did not fall. My dear brother, my dear sister, if you build your life on the word of God, not on the word of the, of the people, not on the opinions of this world, not on what you read on social media. Not on what you, you want to listen to from this world. And you really humble yourself and take time to read the word of God. To meditate the word of God. To, to, to reflect on the word of God daily. My dear brother, my dear sister. You'll be building your life on a firm foundation. On the rock. Even when all the challenges come in this world as they have come. And the world is calm. Still, you not fall. Because your life is built on the rock. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 4 says, The rock is Christ himself. So to build on the rock is to build in Jesus. Praise you, Lord. One, thank you, Lord. My brother, take a decision today to build yourself. To build your life on the word of God. And what is the word of God? St. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, that the word of God is a sword that the Spirit gives us. Can you imagine that? It is the sword that the Spirit gives us. What is the speciality of a sword? A sword can be used offensively or defensively. You can attack with a sword. You attack your enemy. And you can defend yourself from your enemy with a sword. So that's the word of God. And what is my enemy? What is your enemy? It's not your brother, your sister, whom you think he, she or her or he hates you. No, it's not that. There are three common enemies. That is the flesh, which always wants to work against us with all funny desires to make us fall. The second enemy is the world. And the third enemy, which is the, the most serious enemy, is the devil. So when you are equipped with the word of God, my dear brother, my dear sister, you will attack the enemy and destroy the enemy. But still, when the enemy attacks you, you will be able to defend yourself. John 15 Verse 7. What does John 15 verse 7 say? It says that if you love me, you listen to me, and you keep my word, and you stay connected to me, and my word takes a home in your heart, you will ask anything you need, and it will be given to you. The word of God will grant us all the prayer requests that I and you need. The other thing. The word of God can create. Remember the creation story. It was created through the word of God. Because the word of God is life. When you read in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, from 1 to 3, it says that in the beginning there was, a, was, there was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And it says in verse 3 that nothing ever existed, and nothing will ever exist without the word of God. My dear brother, my dear sister, you may want to read all kinds of things. You may want to meditate on all kinds of things. You may want to be crazy about all kinds of things on TV, on phone, or whatever you, whatever you want to. But my dear, make the word of God your friend. Let the word of God dwell in your heart. As St. Paul says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, he says, Let the word of God, with all its richness, find a home in your heart. He who is watching me today, has the word of God 
found a home yet in your heart? Has the word of God found rest yet in your heart? Bible tells us through St. John, in John 14 verse 23, that if you love me by keeping my words, Jesus is saying, if you love me by keeping my words, my, the, my father and I shall come and have a home in your heart. What else do, do you need? What else do I need apart from the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit finding your home, making your home in my heart? My dear brother, my dear sister, you really need to give the word of God first place in your life. Ask yourself, what have I given first place in my life? What is priority to my life? What is key to my life? Have you given the word of God the first place in your life? Have you made the word of God priority in your life? Or you have so many other priorities, but the word of God is not there. Maybe you don't even remember where you last, when you last picked your Bible. Maybe you don't even remember when you last opened your Bible. Maybe you, you don't even remember when you last heard the word of God. Or even when you last meditated on the word of God. But if that is the case, how shall we be fruitful? How shall we bear fruits for the kingdom? Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse 3, that from verse 1 he says that I am the vine and you are the branches. And he says, the branches that do not bear fruits will be cut off. But those that are bearing fruits will still be pruned so that they may bear much more fruits. Then he says in verse 3, he says, But for you who have been listening to the word of God, you are already pruned by the word of God so that we may bear fruits. There is no way I can bear fruits for the kingdom. There is no way I can bear fruits that will extend the kingdom of God unless I give first place to the word of God in my life. Myself, who is speaking, is a testimony of what the word of God can accomplish in someone's life. I don't want to go very deep, but most people who know me know what the word of God has done to me. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, take time, especially during this lockdown, this situation where you have all the time to read the word of God. Put everything aside. Give first place to the word of God in your life. I end with this word again. Mark 13, 31. Heaven may pass away. The earth may pass away. But the world is the word of God will remain forever. Your beauty may go, and indeed at one time it will go. But the word of God will remain forever. Your riches will go. Your fame may go. Your popularity may go. Your wealth may go. Your health may go. But the word of God, who is Christ himself, will remain forever. May the Lord help you with the gift of revelation. May the Lord open the eyes of your heart today. As you listen to this video, may the Lord convict you to begin to give first place to the word of God in your life. And you will tell me. God bless you. May our Holy Mother Mary, the mother of the word, the woman who was nothing, but the moment she said yes to the word of God, she became the most blessed woman. As Luke chapter 1 tells us. In verse, in verse 48, she became the most blessed woman. May, he, may she pray for us that we may give first place to the word of God in our lives. May God bless us. May he keep us in his mercy and his love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.